Okay, uh, having a wonderful uh, talk as I do with so many incredible musicians. I just I just love uh, s having a chance to talk with people in their own homes, informally. I mean, the whole thing. I was I'm talking with American composer Kurt Sander. Uh, he is in Cincinnati, and we are going to be discussing the 2019 reference recordings. I'll put all this stuff up at performingartsreview.net. You'll have a page. You'll have uh, links to websites and how to purchase the CD and so on. Really, oh, absolutely gorgeous uh, performance. Again, 2019 reference recordings release. Apparently, there's a city called Fresh from RR that you're part of. I don't know what that is, but I saw something there on the CD that says Fresh. Marvel. Well, it's new. It's, new. It, it's a, a two-CD release. It is the Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. Uh, uh, it, it is the the whole deal, right? Talk, talk, well, talk to me. Good. Let's start right there, Kurt. Tell me, what is the Divine Liturgy of St. John Christo Chrysostom? Well, it's actually the liturgical rite, uh, the Eucharistic rite of the Eastern Orthodox Church, which includes a variety of ethnic uh, manifestations of Orthodoxy, Greeks, Ru Russians, Serbians, Bulgarians. Uh, so the, uh, the, similar to the, the way that the Catholics have a mass that celebrates the Eucharist, the Orthodox Church uses uh, primarily, not always, but primarily the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, or Chrysostom, uh, and it's uh, prescribed texts that are divided into two main sections, the Liturgy of the Word and the Liturgy of the Faithful. The Liturgy of the Word is where the uh, you have psalm uh, texts that begin the liturgy, and then you have the reading of the Epistle and the Gospel. And then the second half deals primarily with uh, receiving the Eucharist and preparing the faithful for the Eucharist. So uh, the liturgy is a, a seamless kind of thing. And uh, whereas we think of the Roman Catholic Mass as being divided up into sections like uh, the Kyrie and the Gloria and the Credo. The, the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom is is less sectionalized that way. It's it's a little bit more continuous. So that, that, one that, of, That's really why I asked, because I'm imagining that uh, that uh, believers would would engage in the entire liturgy as one in one sitting. Am I close? Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's the, the point of trying to do this CD on, uh, obviously, the, the length of it prohibits it to be on one CD, so we, we made the conscious decision to put it on two in order to contain the complete liturgy, because we really felt it was important to have that continuous element preserved. And I was curious about that, and we're gonna we're gonna discuss it. But first, let's get, let's make sure we understand who's who's making the music here. Uh, this okay. is this is the Patram Institute singers, and we I will ha ask you to tell me about this institute. There's a wonderful video on the on, on it. Let me kind of overview and see if I get anywhere close. The Patram Institute sing, uh, singers and the Patram Institute are the, the bu their business is to preserve uh, Orthodox performance practice, if you will. Am I close? And uh, now I have to leave it, throw it at you. Well, that's true. I think that's that's an important element of it. And I think the, the reason the organization was founded was that uh, during the 20th century, we had many different uh, ethnic groups uh, that came to America. And the level of choral singing suffered as a result because there were just not enough people to uh, to teach and to sing. So I think this organization was designed to uh, to take some of those traditions and preserve them and pass them down to the uh, to the people in this country uh, and to give them good models of singing uh, and and music writing and creativity and uh, and all the things that go into the art of the liturgical musician in the Orthodox Church. That's what's impressed me so much about the institute. What what a great idea to pre just to preserve what what has was beginning to be lost to bring it back, and again, this wonderful documentary that, that is, uh, I'll, I'll post also, uh, and to say nothing of the uh, P Patram Institute singers, I mean, where did they come from? Where, where, where is the, I read somewhere about San Francisco or the or California area, what yep. I'm getting at is they're superb. <laughs> they, they are an amazing group, and uh, it, they actually are, they come from all over the country, uh, and one of the things that we thought it was important to do is have people in the choir who were actual Orthodox musicians themselves. Sure. So it wasn't simply paid singers, uh, professionals, although we do have a lot of, uh, of non-Orthodox singers that 
are sympathetic to Orthodox music and have sung Orthodox choral music, Rachmaninoff, Tchaikovsky, uh, in, in a variety of locations. So we have a, a group of select singers who have a passion for this kind of music, and they're, they uh, make up this Patram Institute singers. And that clarified quite a lot for me that in terms of question marks in my mind. I wondered if this was for Orthodox singers solely. Uh, but you have clarified that others can participate, and then learning this, uh, this, and, and and I'm glad you also clarified this. This isn't just about putting together a CD. There's something far more profound involved in this whole process that, that has to do with Orthodox belief, and so on. Uh, but let's let's figure out who Kurt Sander is first of all. Uh, okay. Doctorate in composition, Northwestern mm -hmm. University, 1998. Appointed conductor. At, uh, uh, this is earlier stuff at St. George Orthodox Church. You were mm -hmm. a Presbyterian, uh, yeah. and and you. <laughs> anyway, you found you found it other, other than you became Orthodox. I'm kidding, just a little bit. The Orthodox uh, Orthodoxy appealed to you uh, greatly. I hope you'll have a chance to kind of tell me what that transition was about. Now you're uh, currently professor of music at the School of the Arts at Northern Kentucky University. Uh, presumably, mm -hmm. that isn't is that in Cincinnati? I guess it is. I keep forgetting. It's Kentucky just ten Jackson. minutes south, uh, right across the Ohio River. Huh, I, uh, keep, I keep forgetting about that Kentucky side right, that's on the other right. side of the, of the river from Cincinnati. Um, and, and we we were not able to have uh, conductor uh, uh, Peter, oh boy, I forgot how to pronounce it. Yermolov, yeah. Thank you. Yermolov uh, with us, who really uh, prepared the singers for this uh, two CD. Am I correct? And yes, prepared yeah, it's amazing. And a, a, an authority on Russian music and on Russian Orthodox music, a con, an orchestral conductor as, as well with every, as everything else. But really, you can you can tell. I mean, the the, the performance uh, by the choir, uh, Patron Institute singers, is uh, just absolutely stunning. I love it when blend is perfect. You know, when the quality of sound is is we. I hesitate always to say vibrato, but when there is this no, this quality of sound that is pure. And that's exactly yeah, what it's, it's a, a remarkable experience that uh, you only get to really feel a few times in your life. Uh, you know, if you're uh, if you're a singer, moments that the precision that it takes to put out a CD in choral music is so much different than a live performance. I mean, the level of precision and intonation uh, and and nuance is just. Uh, Everything you feel, everything is under a microscope. So that the the focus is just incredible. You know, that's what I appreciate about I appreciate about everyone that I interview that puts out a CD. These are these are monumental achievements. In fact, period. No matter what you say, I mean, just the process, the raising of the monies, uh, the putting together the musicians, and then as you said, this kind of microscopic. Uh, uh, you know, you're under the microphone, literally, as well as the right. microscope. Right. Uh, so, so it's a, 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 and to get things perfect, and it, 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 this is what really impresses me uh, so much. This per this performance of the complete uh, divine liturgy. There goes a big. Oh, fire engine. Sorry, I hope we didn't lose too much of the conversation. I'm living in downtown Santa Barbara. Beautiful uh, tourist city. You'd never think that it had a downtown with busy traffic. Um, you know, is there anything different? Can you kind of give me an overview uh, of, of, of the training? Is there anything different in training singers in this particular style, this orthodox style of singing? Is that too dumb and too vague? No, no, I think there's a... Well, first of all, the, uh, the sheer length of an Orthodox liturgy and a service requires stamina. So singers have to be able, I mean, and, and, and the interesting liturgy, no low mass kind of where, where the words, words are spoken, everything is sung, which uh, when you have a two, two and a half hour service, it, you know, it takes a lot of energy. So the stamina, first and foremost, has to be there. But the concentration, um, when you're singing Orthodox texts, the uh, one really needs to, to be able to interpret the words. Uh, in other words, the choir is acting as a conduit between the words and the faithful uh, who are praying. And it's a, it's a tremendous responsibility. So the focus of what you're singing and the... Uh, the words, the meaning, the theology behind the words uh, has to be on the forefront. So even the singers that were on the CD who were not Orthodox, I think that this they felt a certain level of spirituality that they brought to the recording as well. 
and I think you can hear that on the CD is that uh, the experience was just incredible uh, to have all of these people from various backgrounds kind of participating in this uh, in this liturgy. It was uh, it was remarkable, really. And also the idea of English language. The, well, that's the other thing. His emphasis that... of, of, of creating uh, creating Orthodox uh, services, I suppose you can say, liturgical services in the English language. Go ahead. Give, give me a little overview of what that was about. Well, Is it about? most of your uh, viewers are probably aware of the Rachmaninoff uh, All Night Vigil, uh, which is a choral masterpiece. And uh, one of the reasons why it's uh, a lot of choirs have a hard time with that is because it's in Church Slavonic, which is a, a liturgical form of Russian, similar to Russian. So the uh, commission for this liturgy uh, was uh, specific to the English language. In other words, it was a, a Slavic influence, but uh, filtered through the English language. And whenever you compose in a particular language, it starts to take on the aesthetic characteristics. Uh, for example, in English, you have a lot of monosyllabic words, uh, which are beautiful, but they're very different from the multisyllabic words of Church Slavonic. So you get a very different effect. So it's kind of this blending of the Russian with the American or English Anglophone, I guess you would say, uh, musical styles. And I think that comes across... Uh, in a lot of the movements of this of this liturgy, which of course exactly describes your music, gorgeous, yeah. very um, dare I say American? You know what I'm trying to say? The beautiful, yeah, delicious harmonies, the beautiful resolutions. I mean, it's very contemporary music, which also is a big, uh, big kind of breakthrough. This liturgy, yeah. this ancient liturgy, being performed in English, so it can be passed along to English. Uh, congregants, if that's the correct uh, word, a and and uh, lovely, lovely, uh, beautiful, and very accessible, and not easy, from what I can tell. There's some very, very interesting material here, uh, music uh, uh, of your composition. So I mean, this is uh, this is kind of a breakthrough, is it or not? I mean, this is like the it, second. It is. I think it's the first, really, the first uh, of its kind, uh, and I think it's it's inspiring other people to think, well, music is not something that was written a hundred years ago. Uh, it's something that we today should be doing. We should be writing. We're creative individuals. And I think what happened, and if you look back at Russian history, the revolution pretty much shut down the process of liturgical composition. Sure. So at a period of, of uh, decades where no music was being written, so seventy uh, years. I mean, you know, seventy years. And and I think what happened is people got it in their heads. Well, uh, music is is old. <laughs> it's supposed to be, you know. It, but I think we're we're changing that now. And I think this liturgy, uh, hopefully, will rekindle uh, creativity among church musicians and and other people to say, hey, music is for our time. We 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 have a responsibility to create as well. And I think I mentioned to you before we taped, I uh, kind of approached this. I'm looking at this two CD set and kind of wondering, um, do what? What is my posture as a listener, as, as a person who has this now in my collection? Do I? At a, what if, is this to be put on at a din dinner party? Is this to be a <laughs> med meditative, reflective, something? Even my choice of how I how how to listen in my own, you know, preparing for today. I was really. Torn, I wasn't sure, quite sure whether to sort of dissect the, the, this this construct or whether to try and just float through the whole thing, get this wonderful overview. Give well, some help. Uh, I, I, I won't say you have to stand throughout the whole thing. <laughs> like, <you> know. <laughs> no, it's, it's really how it reaches you. Um, one of the singers on this CD is a, 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 a bass named Glenn Miller, and he's one of the, the great octavists, uh, low bass singers of in the world today. And what a he, sound. yeah, he sent me an email uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said, you know, every time I feel the pressures of of life, I, I put this in my car radio and as I'm driving, and it's so calming. It just uh, takes me to a different place, and. So I, I, that's really what I think I'd like to see out of uh, for listeners is that whether you're driving in a car, you're uh, you're out in, on the back deck, or you're in a prayerful mood, however it reaches you, 
uh, I think is is the goal here. It's not designed to be a. It could be a liturgical kind of experience, but it doesn't have to be that that kind of thing to everybody. I would think the CD would uh, set would be very popular with with Orthodox. Uh, People that they would read. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so well, let, well, let's see what happens. But uh, and you, you did did uh, mention this. I guess what I was, uh, I just kind of lost my train of thought. But this idea of, of uh, well, we we spoke earlier also about whether certain sections can be removed because there are beautiful moments for just oh, and, oh it's a com it is the complete service. The priest uh, mm -hmm. speaks. The uh, the uh, deacon has his texts to recite and stories to recite and then the choir responds and so on. So it's it's the whole schlemiel here. But but also there are of course these beautiful I love I love the whole uh, I hope I'm not gonna get in trouble here because of my ignorance, but but the the um, um, sacrament section. Mm -hmm. That whole right. beautiful, beautiful section at the toward the end of, of the piece. Yeah. But yeah. I, so it is not it is not it is okay to take sections uh, for for choruses, and you've mentioned that they're published even separately, but to take sections out and sing them at choral concerts. Absolutely, yeah. and and those uh, certainly to perform the whole liturgy would be a, a great undertaking. I mean, not an impossible one, but uh, I mean you but can now see it here, can be done in English. See this is the doing. this is the entire score, uh, but we do have uh, copies of individual movements that are available through Music Arusica uh, publishers I'll make and. Sure that some of the the, uh, the high points of of the liturgy, uh, the praise the Lord from the heavens, as you mentioned, the communion uh, verse, uh, the Trubic hymn, uh, the uh, mercy of peace, uh, all of these are available also as uh, separate single published copies. For example, we have seen the true light. I mean, you can yes. tell just yeah. just the words alone are a complete piece. Right. Uh, that is a, a just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, moment for choir, and again, your writing is very American. You are an American uh, composer, which I love about American mm -hmm. choral music. Just that, ooh, that gorgeous. Well, I grew up singing in choirs. Uh, some of the great uh, Moses Hogan, African American spirituals, and uh, Robert Shaw. Some of his his early recordings were just uh, inspirational to me. Randall Thompson. Uh, a lot of these. American choral uh, composers and conductors, I mean, were very influential. And I think you do hear uh, quite a bit of that, uh, particularly in the Alleluia as well. There's a lot of yes, uh, yeah, a feeling almost almost of shape note singing. But and you do have uh, have light motif. I, I, yes. I'm pretty sure now, having spent a morning and an afternoon with the entire uh, piece, I'm pretty sure there. I understand the there is w at least one principle. Light motif, yes. Yeah, there are a couple in there. I mean, they're subtle. It's not Wagnerian, uh, you know, not hitting you over the head with it. But, but, uh, it, but uh, by, by the end of the of the of the performance, if I may say so, by the end of the service, I was, you know, that you you know you begin to pick mm -hmm. up the clues. And I think that's key to the organization of the whole piece. So well done, compositionally, if I may. Uh, say, what about that bottom sound? Am I spoke from that famous Russian bottom sound? Am I speaking to the wrong guy since we don't have our conductor here, the authority well, on Russian music? If, if uh, Peter were here, he'd say that the Russian sound, uh, when you think of the American choral sound or, or the European choral sound, it's like an inverted pyramid where the sopranos are the main uh, focus. But in Russian, the Russian tradition, that, that pyramid is flipped around so that the bass is the premier, I mean, the, the sopranos are much less important uh, or less noticeable element. Uh, but for example, on this recording, we had about five, what we call octavists, which are really low uh, basses. And, and I think the, the Glenn Miller sang uh, the G below the staff. Something very low uh, happened there. I'm yes. happy that it was Glenn Miller, apparently, that did that. Yeah. It just bl blows your brains out when you hear something that strong in terms of vocal support and all the rest of it, and that low. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to hear Glenn, he actually sings the um, deacon part on the very first track, the Great Litany. Ah. He's intoning, and it's uh, it's it and sounds otherworldly. The priest, other ain't, the priest <laughs> ain't bad either. No, I mean, no. I mean, just inc incredible voices on, on this CD. Uh, uh, fresh air, indeed, from, from reference recording. What do I? What do I kind of forgotten? Let's see. Um, first of all, about uh, St. John 
Chrysostom, um, Archbishop of Constantinople, just to put things in, in, a, in, in a, 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 a give an idea of the time, you know, 349 to 470 in the current era. In other words, right about the time Constanti Constanti the empire is splitting, Constantinople, Constant Emperor right. Constantine is establishing the, the uh, I guess, the eastern uh, capital, all that, uh, and a patron saint of epilepsy, Apparently, from what I've read, and so I just, uh, and he denounced. Look at this, as I'm sure you know, he denounced the abuse of authority. So here, here. Well, right. <laughs> right. And, and we've said this is the second album. What's coming? What's coming up in terms of uh, what are your? How, are you two a team? Are Are you and Peter kind of a team? What do you have something else? No, we've on? known each other for uh, over 20 years, and we have, we're of one mind when it comes to things music musical. I never have to worry about. Uh, his interpretations he just gets it and uh, he, he loves my music and he's he's very much into promoting uh, 21st century orthodox choral music and I'm very much into writing it so it makes a, a good team uh, so we've got some projects that we're, we're thinking about for the future one is a, a Russian uh, mass for the dead uh, it's called Panikhida uh, but uh, you might think of it as a Russian requiem uh, and that's one thing that that we're we're contemplating right now. And um, you mean you mean by that it's an, it, 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 in orthodoxy there is a, 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 a liturgy a, a mass for the dead. Separate. Yeah, it's, it's not a Eucharistic uh, kind of thing. It's more of a, a funeral service. Um, but it's the the texts are beautiful, and it's been done, of course, in Slavonic, but uh, has not been done in English. And I think that would be a, a, a good second chapter of. Uh, of this experiment that we're and, all working. And by the way, does the does the divine liturgy of Saint John Chrysostom? I'm going to I'm pronouncing it t two different ways each time I, it comes up. The man's going to forgive me. Uh, it's okay. You sound very Greek. But, it's good. Okay, <laughs> uh, but I'm trying. What I'm trying to say is, do do, do Orthodox uh, congregations have their? Th is this a particular day in the calendar? And do they have these? Ceremonies, and you have just filled the. You know, all they have to do is put on the, you know, on the, uh, tape player down. You know what I yeah. mean? I mean, <laughs> well, you see what I mean? I'm making fun a little bit, but no, uh, no. This is a this is a normal done. Sunday service. So if you go to any yeah. Orthodox church, uh, on a Sunday morning, this is the service that you're. Ah. Going. Little inter little bit of interference. You will return. slowly or quickly, but it will be sung. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> here, here. Yeah. So, so, there, so in other words, a, a, just a great idea, and and also again, I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, I know a, a couple of uh, Orthodox people here in Santa Barbara that are friends of mine, and but and I've been to the Orthodox Church a couple of the, the so-called Greek Orthodox Church a couple of times, and then the I believe it's Russian Orthodox Church, and so on. But I, I guess I wasn't am not clear whether services are spoken in Russian or all in English these days in America. How does that work? It depends on the church. I mean, there's some churches where we we'll be half and half. Uh, my church here in Cincinnati, we we have a lot of uh, immigrant Russians and Ukrainians, and uh, so we do about half of the service, maybe a little less than half in Church Slavonic. Uh, and the rest in English, um, but there are many churches that are all English. There are some that are all Greek, some that are half Greek, half uh, half English, ah, some are Arabic. Uh, so there's a variety of ethnic traditions, but I think that definitely the trajectory in this country is moving more toward English language uh, worship. This is like the uh, the English speaking opera, you know, English, uh, English language translations of right. opera. I mean, it's really wide open. It sounds right, to me right. with lots right. of potential, and and also lots of very very good service uh, for believers who speak English. I mean, it's, it's sure. beautiful. Okay, I, I, tell me, have I? Is there anything you're burning to tell us about Patron Institute? Uh, anything before we kind of review and shut her down? Well, I think that the. the the uh, element again that I that I go back to is that uh, when you listen to this CD, it's an investment of, of your time, obviously because it is long. But uh, I would encourage uh, listeners to uh, to really experience the fullness from start to finish, uh, because I think if you listen to only one part or one CD, you miss the second half. It's like watching half a movie. You lose that progression, which is yes, inherent exactly. in the liturgy. 
uh, from the beginning, uh, and and it, you move to an element of repentance, and then you move to the element of the, uh, of the uh, the gospel, and then you start to prepare for the Eucharistic, uh, uh, this the sanctification of the gifts, and then the communion, and then you have that, as you mentioned, that we have received the true light, uh, which culminates the end of the liturgy, and it has this this progression built in, which I discovered more as I was composing that this is really in there. Uh, it, it's it's not sectionalized. I mean, it really, it takes you on a journey. Uh, from and and, uh, and as do you as a composer, and I think that's, you, you actually explained what the experience is. I'm speaking of the ecstatic moments or the, the beautiful, even standalone choral uh, pieces, if I may use that word, uh, that that are here, beautiful, beautiful. But but also the 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 lead up is a very tacky word. But you know the whole process of getting right, there, right. the structure of the piece. So you really had to contemplate an hour and a half structure, right, right, to somehow keep it. And of course the it's liturgy the itself props yeah. up, props things up a bit, if you will, right. So you know when you're thinking, ah, eh, maybe we'll this will this is a beautiful piece of of words that I'll do do right. Uh, Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then after you listen to the whole thing, then you can go back and pick out which ones you want to listen okay. to, and, and so okay. forth. But, but feeling experiencing that whole the thing whole thing is is, uh, is really uh, important yeah. uh, to to really understand the composition. Yeah, even even for non-believers, in the sense that we right. don't have right. to be orthodox to have that experience. Well, as I, as I mentioned to you, it was the, that that dilemma was there. I mean, do I now just do I just float with it? Yeah. Listen to it and float, and that, of course, is is exactly the, the point. That's exactly to lose yourself in text and sound, and and you build up to ecstasy and joy and uh, the whole thing. So fabulous! I am right. so glad uh, that I tracked you down on this. <laughs> and I really had no idea what I what I was getting into, uh, but uh, what an amazing thing! Speaking with American composer Kurt Sander, uh, uh, we're speaking of a 2019. Like, the, like this year, reference recordings release, two CD release, it's the entire Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, sorry, that'll be the way I'll pronounce it, uh, uh, out about an hour and a half, two CDs, it's the, the entire service with music, gorgeous, beautiful, very, very, uh, just, just seductive and fabulous, that's not the right word, I'm sure, but you know what I mean, gorgeous uh, music by Kurt Sander, very appropriate to word and text, I, I want to thank you for that. Uh, and, and clearly other projects are coming up. So I'm going to put all this up. I'll write my uh, my kind of overview. It's kind of hard to, to review a liturgical service. A little at, hard, at, yeah. at, at one level, it's not it's not difficult at all to speak to your your composition and, and okay. kind of kind of colors and sounds and wonderful wonderful choral music that you write. So that that'll be the easy part. Uh, anyway, uh, Kurt, thanks very much. Um, we've mentioned Thank you. The, the CD to the CD set. We'll put it up on Performing Arts Review and uh, and uh, see if we can uh, see if we, you get a, an, an invitation to eighteen thousand workshops around the country. <laughs> Orthodox churches. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. Bye bye. Bye.